Moving on to grooving the lens, now you will be using the FACO probe. The FACO probe is a very critical instrument. Use it in the proper way and it will be a very useful assistant that will get you safely to the end of the procedure. Besides dynamics and settings of different FACO machines, you also need to familiarize yourself with the three positions of the FACO foot pedal. And those positions are position 1, which is irrigation only, position 2, irrigation and aspiration, and position 3, which includes irrigation, aspiration, and ultrasound. While inserting the FACO probe into the eye, you need to make sure that your FACO probe is on irrigation only, as any aspiration or ultrasound will damage your corneal wound. After inserting the FACO probe into the eye, make sure that the sleeve perfectly fits the width of your wound. A wound that is too tight may limit your movement and increase the risk of a wound burn. On the other hand, a wound that is larger than the width of the probe will be leaky leading to an unstable chamber during emulsification. As you are moving the probe, use the incision as a fulcrum and pivot your probe along the incision as you are moving side to side or up and down. By this way, you will have less corneal folds and better visualization. And while operating with the FACO probe on either aspiration or ultrasound, be careful not to go too close to the structures that may be damaged, such as the main wound, the corneal endothelium, the iris, the edge of the rexus, and the posterior capsule. The aim of grooving is to split the lens into two heminuclei that are approximately equal in size. So as you're starting grooving, you need to bear in mind that you have a safe zone that you should not extend beyond. The borders of this zone lie within the edges of your capsular rexus. As you're stroking from one side to another, Imagine yourself at the starting point of a race. So you will press the foot pedal to the maximum level as you are creating your stroke. And by the time you reach the other edge of the rexus and you're getting ready for another stroke, go back to irrigation while you are repositioning your FACO probe, as you won't be needing aspiration or ultrasound during this period. While grooving, it is very important to keep in your mind that the ultrasound power of your probe is doing most of the job. Therefore, try to limit the amount of mechanical force that you're exerting on the eye. So don't press sideways on the globe as you're proceeding with your stroke, and do not press down on the lens, as these maneuvers will stress on the lens zonules. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is the architecture of your groove. The aim is to create a groove in concordance with the spherical nature of the lens, so your groove needs to be deep in the center, and slightly shallower in the periphery. So the movement of your probe in each stroke should be from up to down and then back up again. As you are proceeding deeper, you will notice that the red reflex is getting brighter, and this will help you in assessing the depth of your groove. If you reach a satisfactory depth, you can now insert a second instrument and attempt to split the lens. In order to perform a successful split, Place the FACO probe and the second instrument in the deepest part of your groove and start moving them to the sides gently. As you're spreading the two heminuclei apart, you will see the glow of the red reflex from behind, and at this moment you have to continue until you're sure that you have achieved total splitting along the whole length of the groove. <laughs> 